I'm Dr. Laura Shaheen. Welcome to my YouTube channel. This is a part of a series called COVID Vaccine and Fertility. This particular video is the history of confusion and misinformation surrounding COVID vaccine and fertility. I'm Dr. Laura Shaheen. I'm a double board certified reproductive endocrinologist helping people build families for over 15 years. And the last few years have been particularly challenging for the fertility community. You are already dealing with a vulnerable population, so excited to start their family, to complete their family. If you're struggling with infertility and miscarriage, you're trying so hard to do everything right, to be ready to conceive, to optimize your fertility. And in the last two years, we have collectively been fighting a global pandemic, the COVID pandemic. And there is a medical pandemic, which is real with illness and hospitalizations and death. And there is a medical misinformation pandemic as well, full of rumor and fear. And my patients have been right in the middle of this. It's gotten so politicized and so polarizing that I feel so many patients are just stuck with indecision. We have so much to learn. I just want you to understand how we got to this point. I have other videos here and lots of information on Instagram and TikTok about the COVID vaccine and fertility and COVID and male factor fertility and female fertility, miscarriage, et cetera, COVID vaccine and pregnancy. All this information is there. This particular video, I want you to know a little bit about where we are now and how we got here. How do we have access to a vaccine that can keep pregnant women safe, but yet they're the one of the lowest populations of people to actually be vaccinated. Part of this comes from confusion and medical misinformation. So here we are at the beginning of 2022 in the United States, close to 80 million cases of COVID have been detected. Almost a million people have died from COVID just in the United States. We have access to a vaccine. Over 80% of people who are eligible, that's age five and and older have gotten at least one dose of the vaccine and over 65% are fully vaccinated. Again, these are people who have access to it and are eligible, that's age five and, and over. But pregnant women, it's only 40% of pregnant women are fully vaccinated either before they get pregnant or during pregnancy for COVID. So despite knowing that the COVID vaccine will decrease the risk of severe disease from COVID in pregnant women, this is still one of the lowest percentage populations that is fully vaccinated. Pregnant women are more vulnerable to viruses. We know that from measles, chicken pox, and lots of other viruses. And COVID virus is the same. There's a higher risk of ICU admission, um, severe disease, and even death from COVID if someone contracts it when they're pregnant. And that getting vaccinated will decrease the risk of these severe outcomes, but yet people are still afraid of getting vaccinated. Fear is the number one reason that pregnant women say they have not gotten vaccinated. So almost as soon as this vaccine was available, rumors started about fertility. And how did this get started? It started with a petition that showed up on a German website on December 1st, 2020, recommending to stop vaccine trials due to the potential risk that these vaccines might affect fertility. This was started by a former Pfizer scientist named Michael Eden. He's the one who put the petition up and he was arguing that the vaccine might trigger a response from the body to attack a certain protein in placentas. And that's how it might affect fertility. Let me explain a little bit more. There's a protein on the surface of the virus, the COVID virus called a spike protein. This is spike protein allows the virus to get into our cells and impact the functions in our body and our health. And the spike protein has been used by the vaccines to help our bodies recognize and fight the virus. The issue is that the spike protein has some amino acids that are similar to a protein found in the placenta called syncytion one. And the worry is, is that if the body is going to be attacking the virus because it's been vaccinated, then your body might also attack the placenta. The issue is, is that these proteins are only similar by four or five amino acids. And I know that's hard 
this is hard for me to kind of wrap my head around, but understanding from immunologists and going back to my medical school days, four or five amino acids being similar is so tiny. It's so incredibly tiny that this theoretical risk is not a reality. But as soon as this was even put out there, it spread like wildfire, despite scientists and other researchers explaining that the similarity is not an issue medically or scientifically, that seed, that rumor had already started. And is immediately, it was all over the news channels saying just the question, not saying, oh, the vaccine is going to cause your you to be sterile or, or harm your fertility, but just the fact that the headlines were saying, does the vaccine impact fertility? Look at this former you know, Pfizer researcher that's having questions about the vaccines, just planting that little tiny seed of doubt and fear just exploded. And so it just, and just the way the news cycles work, you know, you have one little piece of information that is just switched and amplified over and over and over again. It's fear cells and the fear of impacting fertility and some issue with the vaccine got a lot of clicks on social media and um, in the news cycle. And so even though this question this suggestion was not founded in science just that humble small doubt just that questioning allowed for fear to seed and grow and we are still battling it today despite evidence now that covid vaccine does not impact male fertility or female fertility or miscarriage rates but that covid does that covid does cause harm to pregnant women and that having the vaccine will decrease the harmful effects from the COVID infection, we still have people scared to get the vaccine, all because of this initial rumor that just got incredibly amplified. Social media is full of misinformation and medical misinformation has been such a hot topic, especially in this pandemic. There is incredible growth in social media, specifically anti-vaccine accounts since the beginning of the pandemic. On Instagram, the number of followers on anti-vaccine accounts has increased fivefold to over 4 million. Facebook, the top anti-vaccine pages have increased by almost 20% in the last couple of years. A JAMA article that came out in February 2022, the Journal of American Medical Association, very well-respected journal, was really reflecting on the incredible growth in anti-vaccination social media and that the vaccine hesitancy is really coming from medical misinformation. So medical misinformation spreads social media, it spreads, fear spreads faster than fact on social media and on website. Fear makes clicks and clicks make advertising dollars. But unfortunately, the victims in this are people who are getting medical misinformation and not getting the treatment that will prevent severe disease from COVID. And this is extremely real for my patients that are trying to conceive and pregnant women who can decrease the risk of ICU admission, severe disease, and even death from COVID if they are vaccinated. And so I want you to understand from this video and from this series that I have COVID and fertility, how a question, just a question, not based in medical fact, but just a question has led to this vaccine hesitancy that has honestly harmed people. This question, not a fact, from a Pfizer researcher back in December 2020 led to so much fear that people are being harmed from it. And I want you to understand where these come from. And I want you to understand the amount of evidence that we have now that really shows that the vaccine does not change sperm counts. It does not cause female fertility. It does not increase the risk of miscarriage. I want to go over that in each part with you in this series called the COVID vaccine and fertility. But in this video, I just wanted you to understand where this medical misinformation 
originated. I hope you learned something from this video. If you did like this video, comment with questions that you have, subscribe to this channel for more information and stick around for more learning. Thank you.